the first time that I had met Nicole was when uh, we were both asked, I think very short notice to co-facilitate the um, adjunct certificate program. And I think we were both very um, caught off guard a little bit and had to, had to make a, a lot of things work in a very short notice. But it was definitely one of the one of the things that I noticed about Nicole very quickly was how was how together she was in a in a space in a new space talking with people and I always felt like I was rambling and uh, you know like I said miming and tap dancing all around and she she had a very professional and uh, put together way of speaking and addressing a, a crowd and I I did learn a lot right from there which I attributed to I think even at the time that entrepreneur entrepreneurial mindset. I, I come from humanities and have my nose in poetry books and everything else and basically get sick to my stomach in front of crowds a lot of times. So um, to, to just see somebody with that kind of business mentality come in and be able to run something, um, you know, even in our short few Saturdays together, Nicole, I really, uh, I really did learn a lot, I think, from how you were able to handle that situation. So with that being said, as a, as a minor icebreaker, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome everybody to this academic lecture series. Um, it is brought to you by the Lash Center for Teaching and Learning. I'm merely just a kind of talking head here at the beginning, but there's a whole lot of people behind the scenes working to make these things come together in the Lash Center. So I appreciate everything that goes on there. Um, to introduce Nicole today, I would like to take the opportunity to introduce Nicole Hall, full-time faculty member for the Department of Business and Experiential Education and the coordinator of the Academic Center for Entrepreneurship, ACE. She earned a Bachelor of Science in Fashion Merchandising and Retail Marketing and a Master of Business Administration from Johnson & Wales University and is currently in the Doctor of Business Administration program, DBA, at Johnson & Wales University. She will earn her DBA in 2023-2024. In addition to working at Bristol, she has taught at Bay State College, Dean College, and Johnson & Wales University. Before becoming a professor, she worked as a dot-com product specialist for Staples Incorporated. In her role on the merchandising team, she helped launch Style at Staples and brought designer brand names such as Martha Stewart and Cynthia Rowley to office supplies. She learned a great deal about search engine optimization and developed strategic initiatives for designer brands to help grow the online business at Staples. She has over 10 years of experience working in the retail industry and has worked for numerous retailers such as J. Crew, Tory Burch, and Lululemon. It was always Nicole's dream to become a professor. She finds her job rewarding and loves working for Bristol. She has made student success her mission and enjoys coaching students to achieve their academic goals. And today, she is here to talk with us about the benefits of adopting an entrepreneurial mindset. So thank you very much, Nicole, for joining us. And I turn it over to you. Thank you, Brian, for having me. I just want to confirm before I get going here, you can hear me, correct? Yes. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for the warm welcome, Brian. That really meant a lot. And, you know, you nailed the story spot on. Um, we were both kind of thrown together to teach the adjunct certificate program. And, you know, we made it work and you were absolutely spot on. You know, it's the entrepreneurial mindset that kind of helped me get through that experience and a lot of my experiences throughout my career. Um, so today, everyone, I just wanna let you know that you're not gonna be leaving here with, um, you know, the resources and the tools to start your own business but you're going to leave here today knowing how to think like an entrepreneur. All right. So I might be the uh, coordinator of the entrepreneurship center. Um, but today is going to be solely focused on the adoption of the mindset. So just so everyone knows my presentation is inspired by the literature that exists out there and the existing research on adopting an entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, there are many books, podcasts, and YouTube videos that talk about the importance of adopting an entre entrepreneurial mindset, such as The Secret of How to Think Like an Entrepreneur by Amy Wilkinson and the book Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. Um, so uh, I am just sharing out with you. I have not done any of my own um, research. I have not published any of my own research on this. I am just sharing out the information 
that I have collected over the years. All right. So first, I just want to define the entrepreneurial mindset. So the entrepreneurial mindset refers to a specific state of mind, which ornates human conduct towards entrepreneurial activities and outcomes. Individuals with entrepreneurial mindsets are often drawn to opportunities, innovation, and new value creation. So today I'm going to really talk about why mindset matters and how you need to transition away from a fixed way of thinking so you can grow and develop and be successful. And your mindset is really the attitude, habits, and decisions and opinions of yourself. So simply stated, the way the entrepreneur thinks and acts is the core of the entrepreneurial mindset. And it's a set of characteristic behaviors that drive action. A person with an entrepreneurial mindset recognizes overlooked opportunities and develops the confidence to take risks, communicates clearly, and is able to adjust and learn from their setbacks. So typically, entrepreneurs believe it is possible to improve their situation and their lives on their own terms. They also believe in the ability to learn, grow, and adapt and succeed. So today in our ever-changing world, I truly believe that we have to have an entrepreneurial mindset to be able to thrive, all right? So the secret here is to really think like an entrepreneur. You have to have a fierce determination to succeed. You can't be bothered by setbacks and you have to be willing to do anything to achieve success. So um, oftentimes when I'm teaching my entrepreneur students, a lot of it is not just you know, the business planning process, like I said, it's, it's more than that. It's how to think like an entrepreneur. So I'm going to transition here to the next slide. So an entrepreneurial mindset is key to success in anything you do in life. People often confuse this with starting a new company and being an entrepreneur, but it is about mindset. This mindset can be applied to any position. People with an entrepreneurial mindset are often drawn to opportunities and are innovative. People with an entrepreneurial mindset take calculated risks and accept the realities of change and uncertainty. So you have to have the optimism and courage to act. All right. So just take a moment here and kind of think about in your personal life or at your career at Bristol, how are you, kind of, how are you reacting to the opportunities around you? So um, some of the key elements here and the advice I give to you today is you must listen first and you must be actively listening. So for an entrepreneur and to have an entrepreneurial mindset, you have to be a good listener and truly hear others, all right? And ultimately you have to be a risk taker. So I'm gonna move to the next slide. So the power of an entrepreneurial mindset, all right? With this mindset, people can recognize opportunity, take action, and not just plan, but focus on execution, embrace risks. They're not afraid of failure. They value time. They do not waste time, and they are constantly on the move and seizing opportunities around them. And number five, they respect ideas from others. They learn from experts. They invest in their personal and professional development, kind of like you all are doing today by attending this um, academic lecture series. And they're constantly reading books, listening to podcasts, watching documentaries, and enhancing their personal growth and development. All right, so next slide. Why does mindset matter? So whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. There are so many reasons why an entrepreneurial mindset matters. For example, developing an entrepreneurial mindset can help to reduce doubt, fear, and anxiety. And also it can help to drive action, focus, and growth. The mindset plays a significant role in how you cope with challenges. All right, so 
one thing I always tell my students and I'll ask everyone here, um, if anyone wants to come off mute is, um, I want you all to think of a time, uh, maybe in your current role at Bristol, again, maybe in your personal life, when you had a moment where you, you thought maybe you couldn't do it, but you told yourself you could do it and it worked out for you. You had a growth mindset or an entrepreneurial mindset and you were able to achieve what you maybe thought you couldn't, but it was because of your mindset and how resilient and persistent you were. So was there anyone here that experienced anything like that that wants to come off mute and share? And if not, I can share one of my experiences. I can share, Nicole, if that's okay. Yep. There was a semester in my grad program where I enrolled in three courses while working full-time here, where I had actually just recently lost my mother too, so I didn't think I was going to be able to take the courses. But embarrassingly enough, I had withdrew from two of the courses the semester before, and so I knew how that impacted my transcript and me paying for my master's program. So I just, knowing how hard everything was to manage, I just had you know, the mindset that I had to get it done to stay on track for my degree program. So that was a quick example that came to the top of my head. Well, thank you for sharing. That was an excellent example. And for entrepreneurs, a lot of time is they have similar situations where it may be financial, it may be other similar circumstances where they think they can't, but they're literally forced to because they don't have a choice because it's it's life or death for them, right? It's either they survive with their business or they don't. So uh, thank you for sharing that. So I'm going to go to the next slide and we're going to talk about the characteristics of people with entrepreneurial mindsets. So people who have an entrepreneurial mindset are strong communicators. They're collaborative. They're flexible. They're resourceful. They're fast learners. They're creative. They're innovative they're critical thinkers, they're problem solvers, and they're lifelong learners. So as you look at the slide, I, I hope that you're smiling or some of the things listed here are kind of um, reminding you of our core values here at Bristol. So we just rolled out our new strategic plan and we talk about how to be resourceful, we talk about how to be innovative, and we teach our students how to be problem solvers, and we teach our students to be lifelong learners. And I'm here today to tell you that everything that we tell our students, we have to also tell ourselves because, you know, working for a community college, things are tight. We're on, we have tight deadlines, we have tight budgets. Um, you know, oftentimes we're understaffed and under resourced. So you really have to be resourceful. You have to be innovative. You have to think creatively and truly you have to be a lifelong learner um, because if we're telling our students that, but we're not taking it upon ourselves to invest in our um, education and personal growth, then we're not doing our students any due diligence. So um, as you see, the characteristics of people with entrepreneurial mindsets are the same characteristics that you should possess as an employee here at Bristol. So I'm going to go to the next slide and we're just going to talk about some entrepreneurial competencies. So opportunity alertness, it's the ability to notice opportunities that have been overlooked. So how many times have there been uh, new coordinators or new deans or new chairs that come into positions and they have, find, they have found new opportunities that maybe have been overlooked by uh, previous people in their position, or how many times have we ourselves come back from summer break or winter break and said, you know, throughout break, I was feeling refreshed and I had time to relook at this project that I was working on. And, you know, I noticed that I may have overlooked this and I, I thought our only solution was X, but it's not. We actually have, you know, three more solutions that we can go with here. Um, and explore these opportunities. Um, next, can you execute courses of action required to deal with prospective situations? So 
how are you taking into account yourself in these situations? And what about your risk willingness? Are you willing to pursue action with uncertain outcomes? So, you know, I oftentimes tell students, you know, you don't have a crystal ball. I don't have a crystal ball. You have to be willing to take on risk and you have to be willing to put yourself out there. You know, a lot of students come to Bristol for answers, right? Maybe they're, you know, leaving high school, they're trying to find themselves and they're trying to get out into the workforce. Or maybe we have a student that's come back after, you know, 40 years or 20 years in industry and, you know, they're looking for something new. But the answers really are within themselves. You know, we're not ever going to provide the answers for them, um, but we can provide them the resources. And same thing with us as faculty. You know, oftentimes, you know, we go to our deans or department chairs or maybe a mentor and we look for advice, but really most of the time we just need someone to listen and the answers are within ourselves. We just have to be willing to take on the risk and put ourselves out there. And uh, lastly, role modeling. It increases your confidence in specific acts as it provides familiarity with the act and similarly as a source of social acceptance. So um, we as educators um, are role models, right? Maybe we're role models to our students. Maybe we're role models within our departments or our divisions or in our work areas. And Um, A lot of times if we're in a leadership role, we're kind of setting the bar and we're kind of giving what it looks like to be successful. But I think one of the biggest things, if you have an entrepreneurial mindset and if you're a leader, um, and when I say leader, I don't mean title. I just mean individual. You are a leader. You are willing to fail and you are willing to accept failure and admit when you're wrong and you're willing to show others that it's okay to fail. And um, that is definitely one of the biggest takeaways um, I want everyone to take from my PowerPoint today. So I'm gonna move on to the next slide. And we're gonna go over developing an effective entrepreneurial mindset. So first things first, I'm sure you guys, you know, we're kind of halfway through the PowerPoint now and you're probably saying, okay, this is great stuff, but how does it apply to me at Bristol? Or how can I apply this to my personal life? So. First things first is you need to understand what motivates you. And if you're working for Bristol, I I have a feeling that it's students, right? Students are probably your number one motivator. If not students, then what is it, right? So you have to really decide for you what motivates you. Is it giving back? Is it seeing other people succeed? Is it seeing yourself succeed? Um, You have to know what you love in order to be good at it, right? Like, My grandfather always taught me and my grandfather was an entrepreneur. He always said to me, it doesn't matter what you do in life. As long as you wake up every day doing what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And as Brian kind of said, when he introduced myself, that's why I work at Bristol because I've had jobs in the past where I haven't felt as fulfilled and I can wake up every day and say what I love. So when I face challenges at Bristol or when you're doing something you love, it doesn't feel like so much of as, as a challenge, okay? Now, challenging yourself is hard. Um, no, one, no one likes to go outside their comfort zone. It's, it's a known statistic. It's a known fact that people for the majority like to stay inside their comfort zones. Um, so challenging yourself really takes courage. And, you know, I, my biggest advice for everyone on this call today is start small. So um, something that you can do is start at maybe your department level, you know, speak up at a meeting, challenge yourself, or maybe take on something that only would directly impact you uh, before you test it out on others, then go bigger, um, then go to the division level, then maybe test it out with your students, and then maybe go even broader than that and take it out into the community. Um, But challenging yourself is important. And if you don't challenge yourself, you're never going to grow. But the advice I give to you all is start small. Um, So um, this is similar to how I asked for volunteers earlier. 
always believe that you can. So today we're learning mindset. We're learning how to adapt and take on that entrepreneurial mindset. And this is not going to be possible unless you believe you can. So whether you're watching a movie, you're listening to a podcast, um, there's so many great entrepreneurs that speak this, um, whether it's Oprah or um, Jeff Bezos from Amazon, literally you can listen to any entrepreneur and they believe that they can. They believe that they can from day one, every day forward to today. And then the last bullet here is break away from the norm. So this is extremely hard, um, especially in given some of our context, it's hard to kind of put yourself out there, especially if everyone in your department or your inner circle is believing one thing and you want to break away from the grain and you want to go against it. But oftentimes when you do that, you know, you might be right. It only takes, remember, it only takes one person to initiate a change. So whatever you're thinking, think bigger. So I'm going to move on to the next slide here. And we're going to talk about some of the benefits of having an entrepreneurial mindset. All right. So with this mindset, you can have a go-getter attitude, you know, kind of like Brian talked about with me when I had that situation, I just walked into the room and I was positive from the beginning. I walked in saying that I could do this. And my attitude has always been in my entire life, whether it's personal or professional, is I look at the glass half full and not half empty. And as corny as that sounds, I teach this to my students because no matter what you do in life, and like I always say, whether it's you're applying this to your professional, your personal life, if you look at the glass half full, um, you really will be more successful and you'll be able to gain that positive attitude. And it helps you fully understand the importance of planning. So my favorite quote is poor planning leads to poor results. And any of my students that uh, leave with me after a semester long, the one thing they say when they walk out the door is, Professor Hall, poor planning leads to poor results. And I, it couldn't be more true. Um, so before you take on any risk, before you try something new, you might want to take time to plan it out. That's why entrepreneurs take the time to write a business plan so they can get their ideas uh, pen to paper planned out. So when they do go to actually take that business loan or start their business, it's not as scary or at least in their head, it's not as scary because they've planned it out. So entrepreneurial are not afraid to experiment. So something might not work. And that's okay. So a lot of successful entrepreneurs, they create a, st a statistics for themselves. They create a percentage. They say, okay, one out of every five things I try is, is going to fail and that's okay. Or one out of every three, depending on the company, depending on their uh, resources and they're willing to take on risk. But um, no entrepreneur is afraid to experiment. And they have a creative mindset. So they're able to think outside the box. They're able to do things that they haven't done before. And lastly, they know the importance of value creation. So an entrepreneurial mindset really does help you deal with being overwhelmed. And like I said in an earlier slide, it reduces stress and anxiety because of your positive attitude, because you're planning and because you're not afraid to fail. All right. So I'm just going to share with you some examples of how I have benefited from having an entrepreneurial mindset, specifically at Bristol. So at Bristol, I'm the coordinator of the Entrepreneurship Center, and I am a team of one. So I don't have anyone on my team. It's literally just me. So that in itself is entrepreneurship. I have no one else to blame when things go wrong. So I have to take responsibility. I have to hold myself accountable. I have to be resourceful and I have to extend myself outside of the four walls at Bristol, even beyond the community to other entrepreneurship programs and other people that can help me like small business owners um, create my events. So just a small example is I hosted the first ever 
virtual pitch contest on October 5th. And we awarded um, a Bristol student with $1,000 to help with their business. And that event, I reached out to people in the community to help me with that event because otherwise it wouldn't have been possible because like I said, I'm a team of one. So you have to get creative and you have to be resourceful. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the next slide and we're gonna go over fixed mindset versus growth mindset. Sorry, Will, can you hear me? We're gonna go to the next slide. Might just be a small tech issue. Okay, can, I'm like, I can, I'm I can like, see, I can see Will's mouse dragging a bit, so I'm sure. No, no, I like thought it was frozen for a second. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, my Zoom crashed. Oh, it's okay. I thought it was me. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> no, um, can you all see? Yeah, we're on fixed mindset versus growth mindset. Okay, I think you're on it now. Okay, perfect. Thanks. All right. So ultimately people with an entrepreneurial mindset have a growth mindset. So people with a growth mindset have the ability to achieve their goals because they believe they can, right? For people with a fixed mindset, failure is the limit of their abilities. And for the growth mindset, failure is an opportunity to grow. So here I'm going to talk about the book that I mentioned in the beginning of the PowerPoint. Um, in the book, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, um, the author states there that there are two entrepreneurial mindsets. So it's a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. And the growth mindset is what allows entrepreneurs to keep changing and trying new things to improve the processes in order to create the effort that it takes to get your business off the ground and succeed. All right, well, we're gonna to go to the next slide. Okay, perfect. So every problem is an opportunity, all right? So um, a lot of you probably teach your students this. If you're teaching them interview skills, um, you teach them that their weaknesses are, are opportunities. So when you have an entrepreneurial mindset, and you start adopting this approach in your life, you will start identifying opportunities and you will not look at them as problems. So it's important to come up with solutions to address problems instead of excuses or to not address problems. So an entrepreneur can't avoid problems and they can't come up with excuses because it's only them. Um, so you have to take on this mindset and you have to accept that this is the way that things are and how can I fix them, right? And how can I solve it, all right? So you have to be creative and you have to view it as an opportunity. Next slide, we're gonna get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Okay, so ultimately you have to take risks and challenge yourself by doing uncomfortable things. So um, there are steps you can take to getting out of your comfort zone and you're gonna take the situation and you're gonna be able to learn and grow from it. So if you wanna be stronger in an area that you work in, maybe you get professional development in that area. Maybe you read a book on it, you take a podcast. So I'm gonna give an example. So when I first took on the role as the coordinator of the Academic Center for Entrepreneurship, I knew nothing about being an event planner, like literally nothing. Brian said it in, in my introduction. I went to school for fashion merchandising. I did not go to school for event planning. I had never planned big events before. And I remember going into my department chair's office and um, saying to her, you know, how stressed and nervous I was because I had never planned this big event. And I took on the role and literally within three months or two months, I had to host 
the ACE Awards, which is a huge event. It's basically like planning a wedding. You have to coordinate centerpieces. You have to coordinate food for 300 to 500 people. You have to coordinate guest speakers. You have to order the plaques. You have to give the awards. Like it is a huge event. And like I said, I was a team of one. And when I went to my department chair with this stress and anxiety, she literally said to me, well, you know where the library is and I'm sure you can find a book on uh, event planning. And I was like, okay, yeah, totally. Yeah, I can read a book on event planning. <laughs> so it was kind of one of those things where I had to learn as I go and it was learning very quickly, but she was right. I mean, there are enough resources out there and I was a smart enough, confident enough person that I could take this on. So I got out there, I got to the library, probably listened to a lot of podcasts and watch a lot of YouTube videos and asked for help where it was needed. Um, but it was a success. And honestly, I had people say this to me, so it's not just me quoting this, but I had people attend that event that were so impressed and enjoyed the event just as much as they had done in previous years. And that was my biggest fear kind of going into it because I really respected the previous coordinator of the program. And I didn't want to embarrass the college, myself, the previous coordinator. I had these big shoes to fill. And when people came up to me after the event and they said that it was seamless and they really enjoyed it and it was, you know, just as good as years past, it it really made me feel good. And it made me be like, okay, well, that's great. Maybe some half the people in this room have no idea that I've never hosted this event. So um, honestly, through that experience, it was a lot and it was three months of hard work, but it really did teach me that it, it was where the magic happened. I was completely out of my comfort zone, but honestly, it was, it's probably one of the proudest moments and proudest things I can look back on so far at my career here at Bristol. So we're going to go to the next slide. And we're going to talk about the power of failure. So I've already kind of touched upon this, but I really want to make sure this is like one of the last things I leave you with here today um, as I'm kind of wrapping up my presentation. Failure is a good thing, okay? And we can benefit from failure. So like I talked about my last slide, that event, there were things that I, that I wish I could have done better. And honestly, that helped me to do the next event better. So one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give anyone is when you fail or you do something wrong or you don't do something right, write it down so you remember it. If you're a visual person, if you like to keep a logbook or a portfolio or anything like that, write it down so you remember it so you can go back from it and learn from it. So here are some ways that you can benefit from failure. So Failure provides a reality check, which I love because I, I honestly think that this is what makes me be a leader. Um, I, I love reality checks. Um, I'll share something with you guys since um, this is a small, intimate group. And I want to show you guys how much the entrepreneurial mindset has benefited me. Um, so as Brian said in my introduction, um, I'm getting my doctorate at Johnson and Wales and I got my other two degrees from Johnson and Wales. Well, fun fact is when I first applied to the doctoral program at Johnson and Wales, I didn't get accepted. I got a rejection letter and it killed me. It totally killed me. I was devastated. I was like, how is this possible? I got my undergraduate degree. I got my master's degree from Johnson and Wales. Like, how did I get denied from the doctoral program? And Luckily, I'm a person with a positive mindset and I don't let failure bring me down and only let it build me stronger. And I just realized that everything happens for a reason and maybe it wasn't my time. And the next year, the following year, I applied and I got in. So that was an example of how it, it gave me a reality check. Well, maybe I need to strengthen my cover letter. Maybe I need to do more. Maybe I need to build my resume, whatever it was. Um, and that's why I like failing because now I'm thriving in my program and the coordinator of my DBA program said to me, you know, Nicole, um, you know, you've really proven yourself. You're probably one of the most persistent people I've met in this program. And, 
you know, being persistent is huge and it's a huge characteristic of being an entrepreneur. Um, so the lessons learned are priceless. They really are. And number three, it gives you the opportunity to do better next time. And you have to remember that there will always be a next time because you're creating the opportunity for yourself. So don't get down on yourself and think that there won't be a next time because there always will be a next time. And it builds strength and character. You know, if I, if I was perfect and I woke up every day and I did everything right, then I wouldn't be who I am. And a lot of entrepreneurs out there, they wouldn't be who they are or as successful as they are today without failure. And a fun fact is most entrepreneurs fail their businesses and then restart a second or a third business and then it's successful. So um, my cousin started a business recently out in Buffalo, New York. Um, it's called Bargains USA Buffalo. And he started so many companies and they weren't successful. And I think this was maybe the fifth or sixth company he started. And he literally started it out of his garage and it's hugely successful. And um, he's probably going to sell it in five years and he's expanded since. So um, you have to fail and you have to be willing to get up again. And lastly, it can help you realign your goals. So this has helped me a lot throughout my career. So in my career before Bristol, if I failed at a job, like I knew that job wasn't for me or that project wasn't for me. And it helped me realign my goals and go back to my ultimate vision of teaching. Because I'm, you have to remember that every time you fail, if one road doesn't work out, there's another road to take. And that might be the road for you. So failure is only the opportunity to begin again. And this time more wisely. And there's no such thing as failure. Failure is just trying to move us in another direction. Wise words from Oprah. All right, Will, you can head to the next slide. Okay, thanks. All right. So now I have to help you get over your fears so you can be successful. So you have to overcome your challenges. You have to be decisive. You have to accept responsibility. Okay, so don't play the blame game. Pretend that you're a team of one and there's only one person to blame and that's yourself. Take accountability. The, you have to have the desire to improve your skills. You have to genuinely wake up and want to do better. You have to be willing to learn from your mistakes. And as I said before, a great way to do this is to write it down, reflect on it, um, you know, take a drive, whatever helps you think. And then take continuous actions on your dream. So that last bullet is so important because change is inevitable, right? And it's never going to be, okay, great. I woke up, I did this. Or one day you're checking the box. Great. This is done. It's continuous, right? We are at Bristol five days a week, right? <laughs> All year long. So it's not like a, oh, I, I did this, this this semester, so I'm good. No, you have to do it the next semester and then the next year. So you have to be constantly innovating and um, being creative in your ideas. So how we view ourselves in the world around us impacts our ability to dream and achieve. All right. So today, where needs and opportunities are evolving faster than ever before, we need a mindset that equips us to recognize opportunity, take initiative, and innovate in the face of challenges. All right, next slide. So this is um, definitely in line with Bristol's mission, and I truly believe it, and I have since it started at Bristol. So why you should never stop learning. You want to stay relevant and motivated. It's important to make a lifelong commitment to education and growth. If we stop learning, we stop growing. Never stop learning because life never stops teaching. All right. So this is so important because we need to have an entrepreneurial culture at Bristol. When we rolled out that strategic plan, everything that was encompassing in that was an entrepreneurial mindset. We, we want to be able to do more with less. So you need to be resourceful and you need to be willing to take on risk, all right? 
if you're not willing to take on risk, you're not only limiting how much you will grow, but you're limiting the growth of the college, ultimately limiting students' growth and the community. We're all connected and our actions directly impact the culture, students, and the community. All right, so here's something interesting to consider. People tend to move swiftly through their careers when they put less stress on the people around them. People want to work with people that are confident in their decision-making skills. So remember how I told you guys that I'm a team of one and I have to take responsibility and accountability for my actions? Well, so does everyone at Bristol. We all need to, to create the entrepreneurial culture that we need to succeed. Because as we've seen with COVID and everything shifting to technology, our competition is only increasing. And now is the time. So next slide, just some parting words and a quote to leave everyone with. Being an entrepreneur is a mindset. You have to see things as opportunities all the time. So um, next slide, Will. So hopefully with today's presentation, you guys um, were able to take the message of you can only go as far as your mind lets you. And today I want to challenge you all to be brave enough to step outside of your comfort zone, to push yourself and create a life and a career that you want. Adopting an entrepreneurial mindset will help you set goals and dream big. Remember what you truly believe is what you can achieve. And as I said, this presentation is not based off of any research that I've done. It's based off of books and podcasts and YouTube videos that I've watched. And if you enjoyed this presentation, I encourage you to read this book, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. And with that, I'm going to end my presentation and go to the last slide. And I just want to thank everyone at the Lash Center for giving me this platform to present today. And I really do hope that you all enjoyed the presentation. And it's funny because I feel like if I was in person, maybe I would have been less nervous and it's hard to connect through Zoom, but I hope you took something away from this. And um, if anyone has any questions or comments, I'd be more than happy to connect with anyone. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nicole. Um, I always have things to say, but I always try to like hold off and uh, like let, you know, let others have opportunity, but thank you so much. And um, if anybody has any questions, comments for Nicole, um, feel free and I'll put myself back on mute. Um, I have a question and a comment. So hi, Nicole. My name is Tim. I'm relatively new here at Bristol. Uh, I actually work with Will in the Lash Center. I'm an academic coordinator and I work with the Title III grant. So one of the things I've come across in my research is Carol Dweck's uh, research on growth mindset. And I really appreciated your presentation and connecting it to the entrepreneurial mindset more generally. Um, so I'm wondering, as an instructor, how do you integrate this into your classes? And can you give an example of one activity, for example, that you think might be useful for other instructors um, uh, to help uh, build a growth mindset or an entrepreneurial mindset? Definitely. So I am someone who um, believes in OER full heartedly. I try to use open educational resources whenever possible. So similar to the presentation I shared today, I tend to bring more books, podcasts, TED Talks into the class. So my students can hear kind of similar to what you said, adopting the growth mindset. So one of the classes I teach is RMN 118. We're in the process of transitioning it over to MAN 118. And it's a workshop and team development. And in that class, um, I teach two books, actually. So one is Who Moved My Cheese? Um, it's a very, I don't know if you're familiar with it. Okay, it's a very small book. You can like watch the 10 minute YouTube video. And then the other book is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And in this, we kind of teach that because I, if you're familiar with the Seven Habits by Stephen Covey, um, he teaches you to begin with the end in mind. And I feel like when you do this, it helps you with the growth mindset because it helps you believe what's possible. So the first thing I do with all my classes is on the first day, 
I make them, I mean, I do like the introductions, like whatever, write the little note card. But one thing I do, especially with my entrepreneur classes is I bring in this big jar and I give them all pieces of paper and they write down what they want to look like when they either they graduate or in, in five years when they come back for Bristol or 10 years. And what does this look like? It could be as simple as a sentence, like I graduated, I have a good job, or it could be a paragraph, like however long like it needs to be. And they put it in the jar. So they're beginning with the end in mind and they have this growth mindset. So I'll give you some examples. And I tell them that I will keep this in my jar, which I have on my desk and they can come back to Bristol and visit me in 10 years. And they can pull it out and see if they prove themselves right. So, um, you know, whether it's they want to achieve a college degree, they want to have a successful career in, um, you know, a management role, whatever it may be, but helping them visualize it and actually write it down helps them achieve it and adopt the growth mindset. I hope I hope I answered your question. I can go into more detail, but I feel like I'm rambling. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. That was a good answer. Nicole, I just wanted to um, thank you for your, your honesty in this space um, and, per, and sharing your own personal experiences. Um, I don't necessarily have a question, but I just I appreciate hearing and getting to know more about you. And I mean, I was part of that ACP um, cohort when you did join. I think you, you did awesome. I wouldn't have known any different, you know, so um, certainly what you're, you're speaking is true to the person you really are, you know, um, but I just wanted to, to thank you for sharing your story in this space and um, just let you know, I, I appreciate it. I really do. Thanks. Well, I appreciate it. And I've said it to, you know, Jen Deckers when I've seen her or others, every time I see you, it amazes me because you entered that program with Brian and you've just flourished at the college. You've completely grown and you're so successful. You did such a great job last week um, and everything. So kudos to you too. And, you know, just that comment right there, like, you know, me, you and Brian are connected and we're all watching each other grow over the years. And it's pretty incredible. And I, I feel like, you know, to Brian and Will's point at the beginning of this, it's like, we need more of this because this is how we're going to establish a really great culture and we're going to grow together and we're going to help grow the college. So. That was kind of my point. I don't want to take up the floor from, from somebody else. So like, show me a sign of like thumbs down if you want me to like stop. But um, one of the things that is really inspiring me lately are these, these things that I'm seeing happen. You just said the word culture. Um, we have these silos, right? And I, it exists everywhere. It, it's not just a Bristol issue, but um <laughs> I'm seeing these walls dissolve as you're talking. You know, I, I wish there were more division one people here, for, for example, right? You hear entrepreneurial and every division one person might turn into like a Lloyd Dobler from say anything. You know, I don't want to sell anything. I don't want to be a part of selling anything, right? But like, there's these really interesting parallels between what you were saying with entrepreneurial mindset and what we do in humanities about revision and reflection. And you start to see these places where there's this great interconnecting like web of supportive knowledge that we could offer our students. So you come into an English 101 class, but you've got business, you've got interest in business and I can tap into, you know, drafting this is very similar to what you'll be doing if, you know, in business entrepreneurial mindset, you know, the idea of a business plan, how a business plan could reflect almost like an outline of what you're about to do um, for a paper. Um, so I just, I just think there's such wonderful opportunity there. The idea of putting yourself not, uh, not being afraid to make mistakes with the entrepreneurial mindset, how that could help a student in, you know, it reflects almost um, the scientific method, right? The scientific method of trying something out, testing it. So to me, a lot of times we have students who the best way that maybe we could support them is to have them see the transfer of this knowledge between what classes they're taking here and what they're learning over here. And the only way to do that is to be more intentional as faculty to be able to see those similarities across the different realms of what it is we're doing. 
And I know Jackie, I see you there. And I know that you have a business background and ended up in, in English, right? And so you have that ability to do that, but I don't think it comes naturally to a lot of us. Um, so events like this, I think are very helpful that make us see that the, you know, there's a lot more, there's a lot more room to experiment, though it may be uncomfortable. Like you said, Nicole, it gets me uncomfortable. Like if I start moving into the business world a little bit, it makes me a little uncomfortable, but I think there's, there's benefits there for us students that make it worthwhile. So thank yeah. you. Oh, no, you're welcome, Brian. And, you know, to your point, it really is like an entrepreneurial mindset is just honestly getting the confidence and the courage to not be afraid of failing. And, you know, for your English students, if they ever want to get published, I mean, they, they would need that. They would need an entrepreneurial mindset because how many, you know, doors are they going to knock on and they're going to say no, but you have to keep going, you know? So um, there's so many people at the college that could benefit from this talk. And it, it really, I, I tried to tie it back to the strategic plan, but we need, we really do have to all be innovative in everything we do. It could be something as simple as, you know, oh, a, a student doesn't have, you know, lunch or they don't have the proper food today. Like, how am I going to assist them with this? Or uh, a, per, a student is stressed out and, you know, they're not focusing on my class, but you need to be entrepreneurial. And maybe it's not recommending the tutoring center. Maybe it's offering the yoga classes at the fitness center because that's what they need. You know, like there's, I could give a thousand examples. So. I, I just want to thank you. Oh, sorry. I just want to thank you. I, I thought this was an awesome presentation and um, I think you're right on, on all these different points and, and you as well, Brian. And I think students, and I don't know, you know, it's that glass half full thing. I think students, if, if they're coming to school, they actually probably have a touch of this entrepreneurial spirit and may not even know it. Uh, and so it's, you know, uh, up to us to kind of tease it out of them and let them recognize it. You know, I mean, they come in, uh, I'm sure it's a scary thing. They know that they don't know. That's why they're there. <laughs> You know, so um, it, it's a trial and error and it's a, it's a, it has to be a positive mindset where they, they know they're going to be challenged. They know there's opportunity. So, you know, they probably have a touch of it anyway. And I think it's important for us to, um, to tease more of it uh, out of them. And I think by, you know, the presentation that you did today, that kind of um, outlines the characteristics and the carry and, and, you know, the, the value of failure um, and all of these things that you pointed out, you know, it just helps to remind us as faculty to, um, to work with those things, to be able to kind of, you know, tease out that um, entrepreneurial spirit that they come in with, which in turn really is, I think, directly correlated to motivation, you know? So, um, that's what I, I just think it's great. I think you just did a great job and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for, for being here and bringing up these points and keep, keep at it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, sorry, I, I was just going to add one quick thing. Uh, Brian, you're talking about how um, faculty can learn from each other, perhaps, or just Kind of blend a little bit about what's going uh, with what's going on in other classes, and that reminds me of uh, high impact practices, learning communities. Specifically, that's a perfect example of that. Um, it's a heavy lift for a lot of instructors to actually, you know, launch a, a learning community. But generally speaking, uh, high impact practices would be an example of of um, uh, an opportunity to practice the entrepreneurial mindset uh, among faculty. You know, can you try something different? Can you, um, you know, experiment a little bit? Um, so. Uh, I, I'm just making those connections with something that I'm also involved in here. Um, so, uh, oh, but anyway, I, go ahead. Sorry. That was a great point, Tim. And just one of the things that I want to remind people of is back to culture. We can only do this. We can only be entrepreneurial if leadership lets us fail. So you have to remember that, like you have to have these conversations with your deans or your department chairs, and you have to go to them and say, I want to try this. It may not work, 
But if it doesn't work, I promise to take the learnings and report back on why I didn't and how I can do better. So that's also like a conversation you need to have. And we need to like start creating this culture of failure is okay because at least we're trying. So I just wanted to reiterate that point because people are never going to be okay with experimenting if they're afraid of getting reprimanded by their boss. That's very true. That's a great point. Excellent. I'm going to be mindful and respectful of everyone's time. I really, again, appreciate. Thank you so much for joining us today, Nicole. Thank you, everyone else, for being here today and um, being a part of this conversation. These are recorded. They will be uh, stored at the Lash Center YouTube, um, so we'll be able to access this again. And of course, if there are you know any further questions, um, if you know future projects, things that you're thinking about, you know this is a great opportunity to not let these kind of end here, but to think about ways that we can move forward. And please feel free to contact the Lash Center to get these things going. We got Chris here, Will, everybody else that is familiar with Lash Center, of course. So. Um, so that's it. Thank you so much and take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye. I really appreciate it. Bye, everybody.